until we find it. Okay, so with that said, we're going to come back to that in just a minute. So leave it, don't, don't erase anything because we're going to use that same data stuff in just a minute. All right, so types of linear relationships um, or types of relationships, they don't all have to be linear. Um, ours is linear, so, but they don't have to be linear. You can tell by looking um, what these are. Here, this one's nonlinear, and we could actually probably look at it and say, what is that? That looks like the ultimate. <laughs> it does look like, or like a Star Trek. The Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a quadratic. Um, but, but good news is we're not doing anything in this class but linear um, relationships. All you have to say is it's linear, it's nonlinear, or there's no relation at all. Like this one down here at the bottom where this, the dots are just completely scattered out. And that would be um, no relation. So also... Um, on the top of the next page, we have both positive and negative associations. So we generally can say that two related variables are positively associated if an increase in one of them causes an increase in the other. So the first one on the, the previous page was a positive association. And we can say they are negatively associated if an increase in one causes a decrease in another. So you can see um, there are some different positively associated linear plots and some different negatively associated linear plots. So, and, and if you look like this, these last two, are really, especially this one, I think. But maybe it's just because, I mean, I guess it's just the exact reverse of that. But it would probably be pretty easy to say that these are not associated almost because they're kind of scattered out. But you can see that there's a, a rising right. trend. And same thing here, there's a, there's a falling trend. So there's still, they are very loosely associated, but they are positively associated and negatively associated. So that's what we have to take into account on the next page. As you can see from those examples, knowing the direction that they're going isn't enough. We have to quantify the strength of the relationship as well. So what we use to do that is a new statistic called the linear correlation coefficient. Oh, I don't like that. Because <laughs> it's um, good. Linear cor correlation, correlation. <laughs> coefficient. <laughs> now, in this class, we are dealing solely with linear relationships, so we can just call it the correlation coefficient, or just the correlation, and we know we're talking about the linear correlation because that's the only one we're doing right now. So there are others, but that's the only one we're gonna deal with, so. Um, the linear correlation coefficient, I'm gonna put LCC, um, is a measure of the strength of the linear relationship between the two variables. So this is the number that's going to tell us how related are they. Um, because that's kind of important. You know, when people say, when people say things to you like sleep, sleep is directly correlated or directly related to grade, to your GPA, well, how much? I mean, if it's very loosely related, then I'm not going to worry about it. But if it's really, really related, then maybe it's more of a concern and I need to think about it. So this, this number is going to tell us how related these things are, how closely they're correlated. Um, and just, so this is the formula, and in case you can't see it, I'm gonna, because it kind of didn't copy all that great. Look how pretty this copy looks. Oh, see how wow. pretty that is? That's nice. Much That's prettier nice. than this copy. Yeah. It's what happens when you copy a copy, it doesn't. But when we put on our thing, I put, like I, if I wanted it to make six, six copies from my printer, it doesn't, it'll only make one and then I have to copy the rest of them yeah. and set, or I have to print it six times, which is stupid. So, so you get the good one. Yeah, well, I did. I didn't really, these looked quite that bad until, 
that's why I was just looking at it, but, but I want to write it down here so that you can see it. It's a lowercase r, and I want us to see if, before I show you how to do it, if we can kind of um, decipher the formula, because I think that we know enough, and if we can decipher the formula, then... Um, then it doesn't matter if you remember because you can just read what the formula says to do. Um, I think I got it, but I still have to write it on that. So, okay, the sum uh -huh. of, um, okay, that looks like the z score formula. It, and it, it is. It is basically. Uh, so but what is xi? Initial. Which, in this case, if, if I'm talking about the data that I put in my calculator, where do I get my xi's? That's, oh my gosh, what is that called? Just pro the, the, the individual. Pre -pre it's, it's the individual data. Yeah. Each, each one of them, so the eight value, the eight x values that I put in, those are my xi's. Because that little xi would be x1, x2, x3, x4, so that's the eight of them. Then uh, minus x bar, well, what's x bar? Mean. The mean, and it's just the mean of all the x values, divided by s sub x. Standard deviation. Standard deviation of that particular sample of x's, yes? Mm -hmm. um, then I have the same thing with y. So I just switch over to list 2, it's all of my y values, minus the mean of the y values, divided by the standard deviation of the y values. Over degrees of freedom. And then we multiply them. Yes sum them, and then divide them by the degrees of freedom, which in this case would be what? Seven. 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 Because my data values, I had eight data values, so I do eight minus one. So is everybody good? So that's all we have to do, right? So the first thing we need to do is find our mean, our mean for our, I think, yeah. So we need to find our, this is, these are the eight data values we put in, I think. I think um, I, it's the same list, right? Isn't it? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I thought I'd choose the same list. Um, okay, so we need our mean of our, of our x values and our y values. So if you remember, stat edit, I'm oh, sorry, stat error over to calc, number two is two variable stats. And my x list is in list one, my y list is in list two, so you can just hit calculate. And do we have a frequency list? No, this time we don't. So... We can just um, write down our x bar is 73.5. The standard deviation of my x values, I'm going to use two decimal places, 12.77. And then scroll down and you'll, you can get the y information. Y bar is 84.5. And then the standard deviation of y is 17.16. All right, so we just read what the formula told us we needed to do. So now let's use our lists to do that. So I'm going back to my stat edit. And so I know I have to multiply these things, but I've got to find, like, like Julie said, these are basically the z-scores. So I have to find my x z scores, and I'm going to do that in list three. I've got to find my y z scores. I'm going to do that in list four, and then in list five, I'll multiply them by each other. Oh. So when you put it in your calculator, because of the way the calculator is programmed, it won't let me write. Uh, it won't let you use a fraction bar. It won't let you use alpha y equals and make a fraction bar. So you have to use parentheses to show that you want the top to happen before the bottom. So if you if you look back at your formula. I have to do my x value minus my mean first and then divide it by the standard deviation. So it won't let me use an, a fraction bar. So I, in my calculator, I'm just going to do my x values, which are in list one, minus my x mean, which was... Wait, how do you do L1? Uh, second and one. What? So minus my mean, which was 73.5. Divided by my s, um, my standard deviation of x, which I have 12.77. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me all of those. Oh, boy. I mean, those are some weird numbers. It didn't work? No. What did it say? Anything? Mm -hmm. Are you? Oh, make sure you're up on the L. Oh. 
And now I'm going to do the, the same thing for L4, but this time I'm doing it for the Y list. Wait, what was L1? L1 minus the mean. Divided by the deviation. All right, so now we're doing the same thing. Oops, wrong thing. Uh, for the y value, so I'm going to do list 2 minus the mean of the y's, which is 84.5, divided by the y standard deviation. All right, so we've now found these things. So we need to multiply them. So I go over to list 5. And they're in list 3 and list 4, so I can just put L3 times L4. All right, now this sigma tells me I need to sum those things. So second, second quit, go to a regular page. Second stat, over to math. 5 is sum, and it's list 5 that I need to sum. Oh my gosh, that was so much. I don't think I remember all of that. All right, so I got. I got 6.9. Oh, okay. You must have a data value different. Yes, sir. Um, in like I tried to put an L5. You said L3 times L4. Is that correct? Yes. It keeps saying error. Go back and look. Uh, hit stat and look at your list. Make sure you have an L3 and an L4. Uh, probably just didn't. You do? Yeah. Oh. Hold on. It doesn't, it doesn't say what the error is. Does it say go to? So you can hit enter and go to it. of freedom, which this time was 7. Uh. And I get my R value is 0.987. Yeah, divide by the degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1. I had 8 data values, so that's okay. N. 8 minus 1, 7. Me too, Betty. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did y'all see her fall? I have to get the sum. Sure. 